Good morning from New York City. It's so interesting. Spring has sprung and it's overcast today. And on some level, it feels like a bit of a relief. Living in a bustling city like this, when it's beautiful weather and everybody's out, you kind of feel guilty staying at home. You feel like you should be out on the street. And that's, of course, ridiculous. You can't be out in that energy all the time. Another thing I've noticed is that a lot of my friends aren't well right now. Allergies, colds, COVID. And I was commenting to my friend Sarah that we skipped winter. In New York City, we only had about 12 days of seriously cold weather, and it really didn't snow. So the things we do in winter, like eating more warm food, staying in, nesting, retreating, we largely skipped over that. Anyway, this morning I was sitting here thinking about seasons metaphorically and what season of my life I'm in, and more specifically, the season of New York City I'm in. I'm just having so much fun and appreciating so many things. And I'm an appreciator by nature, but this is like a really vibrant period for me. And I was thinking, what is that about? Of course, I'm fully aware that happiness comes from within and I'm in a happy space. And you can be living in a place you love where there's skiing or nature or whatever it is that turns you on. And if you're not feeling good, that matters less, right? And back to the question of what season I'm in here. My first season, I would say, was largely about work and adjusting, having come from Europe for 20 years and taking on a new job in a new city and a new country, even though it was my own, was extremely stressful. I lived blocks from Central Park and really never went. I think my nervous system was on high alert, adjusting to the energy here and the new job. I simply needed to retreat and turn the city off. And the second season was largely a long-term relationship where we had a second home. And in that phase, I really appreciated the access to the train station and just simply the ability to get out of the city. You can be at the beach or in the country in upstate New York or Connecticut or New Jersey or Pennsylvania. They're all within an hour, an hour and a half. It's a great thing about New York City. So in that phase, I was either outside of the city in Montauk or traveling to Europe for business. And I wasn't fully present here in the way that I am now. I've always been a theater goer. There were periods when I was going to jazz or Carnegie Hall. But this is a season when I'm in love with the theater. I met someone who invited me into her little group. They're avid theater goers, and they've taken all of the work out of going to the theater for me. And that's been really great. And as I believe I've mentioned before, I make gemstone necklaces. So I've really gotten into this underbelly, what's called the Gold District on 47th Street, where there's a thriving jewelry trade. That's been a lot of fun. And because I have more time on my hands right now here, I've been exploring neighborhoods that I've been to before, but I've been spending more time there, like Chinatown. So there are all these neighborhoods in New York that New Yorkers will tell you are so much smaller due to the gentrification and skyrocketing rent. Places like Little India, Chinatown, the Flower District, they're much reduced, but they're still thriving. The Flower District on 28th Street is fabulous. And Chinatown, it feels big to me. It's so interesting to see all the different fruits and vegetables on the street that I don't even know what they are. And the fish markets and the way Chinatown caters to its own, like everything's in Chinese and they live there or they come from outside of the city to shop there. And of course, they also accommodate all of the tourism, right? Who doesn't love a great, authentic Chinese meal? Yeah, so it's just a fun season. I appreciate seeing the wacky way people dress. You know, I spent 20 years in Europe where the way you look is absolutely critically important. And here, I just love that you don't know who anyone is based on how they look. I remember my friend Mary Beth told a great story. She used to be part of a dog group in Central Park, and she told me there was this man who was just so schleppy and had holes in his clothes and wore really beat up things, so much so that the group was thinking about buying him a new pair of boots. And at the time, Mary Beth worked at Christie's, and she said one day she went downstairs and ran into the very man who was so schleppy looking in the park there to bid at an auction. I think it's just really cool that you never know who you're talking to. You never know where they come from based on the way they look. I guess I'd sum it up by saying that the aperture on my lens is wide open. I'm seeing life in full color here and noticing the big things and the little things. I'm also getting to see a lot of people. I feel like everybody comes through New York City, whether they're from out of the country or out of towners. I always tell people, call me no matter what. Even if it's last minute, I'd love to come meet you for coffee. Manhattan is tiny. I can get anywhere in 15 minutes. 
So I'll end by saying, what season are you in with the place you live? Do you need to do some spring cleaning and try something new or go someplace you've never been in your own town? Sometimes simply discovering a new neighborhood or a new friend or a new activity can help us rediscover new appreciation for the place we live. And of course, there are times when you have to say, you know, I think I'm kind of done with this. I want to explore a new place to live or I want to spend more time away because this town is feeling stale to me. Sometimes simply spending more time outside in a way makes you appreciate what you have when you come back to it. I don't know who needs to hear that or if it's helpful in any way. Perhaps it's just a simple invitation to shift your perspective. That's all for now. Until next time, from my heart to yours. 